Well, thank you for joining us this evening for our Good Friday service and the start of a two-part series during this great gospel weekend uh, titled, quite appropriately, The Gospel, The Most Important News. And we will be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 in verses 1 through 8 in these two sermons, starting this evening with the death of Jesus tonight. And then looking on Easter Sunday, just a few short days away, about the resurrection of Jesus. So turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'll read all verses 1 through 8 this evening. But of course, we're going to be just focusing on the first three verses uh, for our sermon. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 1. This is God's holy and powerful and inspired word. Now, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being Saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, as of first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and, he, and that he was raised on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. And then he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, because of whom, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. Let's pray. Father, we come before you knowing that you reveal all things to us. And that you also reveal the most important things and the most important thing to us. Oh God, we ask that you would help us all to see that very important thing this evening and then on Sunday as well. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. We are all consumers of various information, aren't we? Headlines and news every single day. We have conversations with friends and family and they give us updates, right? Our personal news anchors. Did you see the most recent information regarding the coronavirus, for instance? Or did you catch that final play of the game? Not so much of that news going around right now, but, but you get the point. We hear more information. We hear uh, it all around. And we see notifications on our phones, don't we? Or we hear the beep. And we look, and sometimes we find out some important information, some important news, and other times we just find out trivialities, useless things even, things we just rather ignore. But what if I told you that I have this evening the most important headline to give you of all time? And what if I can guarantee you even that you should turn up the volume of your notifications on your phone right now so that you might not miss this very important message. Many of you would be skeptical. So much news, so many phone calls with updates, so many meaningless notifications. Others, you might be interested in some groundbreaking news, such as the one that I'm kind of anticipating and moving towards, but 
You're certain that the kind of news headline that you might be interested in would not be found in this black book that I'm holding in my hands. Because to you, the Bible is as irrelevant as your local news over a year ago. It's not relevant to you, or so you think. And I'd understand that you might think that way. Because I used to think that way as well. I mean, how can a message from thousands of years ago compete with the here and now current events that we find ourselves in? Nothing in our lifetimes, for instance, has been more consequential across the nations for us and in our situation than what we're navigating here with this current pandemic. Everything has changed for us. Schools have been canceled. Jobs lost. Family members and friends are sick. People dying across the nations. Church services canceled. Everything is changed. We even wear masks when we go out. Our world and life as we know it, let me tell you, it, for, in so many ways, it seems like it's just come to a screeching halt. And what can be more newsworthy than that? What can be more relevant and headline-breaking than the reality that we're in? Not much, right? Not much at all. For us, this is the center of everything right now, and for good reason. However, the Apostle Paul reminds us of something in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, something of greater importance and relevance than, than even the breaking news of our day. More important even when we first found out that everything was going to be canceled. More important even. More important even than the experience that we have in the here and now. More important even, Lord willing, when we find out that everything will resume again, which we pray for and we look forward to. But there's something here that's more important than even that. More important than even getting back to normal. Well, what is this very important news? Well, that leads us back to our text in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 1. We're going to look first at the gospel Reminder here in 1 Corinthians verse 1. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and in which you stand. Paul, you see, had to remind the Corinthian church about this very important news. And I am going to remind you through the Apostle Paul of this very same news that he reminded them about years ago. Because we don't want to forget this very important news in the midst of all that is going on around us. Allow this pause button on your life right now not to drown out and let you forget this very important news. Do not forget this very important gospel message. And if you don't even this evening know or believe this news, at least listen in for a minute and let me tell you what it is that we're talking about as Christians on this Good Friday. Because though you may not have seen it relevant to your life up to this point, let me tell you, there is really nothing more relevant than you could hear right now or ever. It's the most relevant thing, most important thing for you because the good news of the gospel is handed down to us to read in our Bibles. This black book I hold in my hands that is collecting dust for some of you on your shelves or, or maybe it's never even been cracked open by you before in your life. It's an old 
message, but it has fresh and new implications for everyone. For the Christians who are here with us in this room or, or watching, for you, it's the message of your rescue and your transformation. It's what changed your life, isn't it? It's what is your answer to your, what you know is your biggest problem in life. It is the solution to. It is the answer to your problem of sin and guilt. For Romans chapter 5 and verse 6 says, For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Christian, you are the ungodly in that passage. He died for you, not because of how great that you were. He died for me, not because of how great that I am or how deserving that we are. No, no, no. He died for us for quite the opposite reason and in and, and, and quite the opposite situation. He died for us because he knew how weak and incapable and helpless that we really were and are and continue to be. Now, some of you, this is some really, really good news. John Krasinski has this very encouraging recent news segment by the same kind of title, SGN, Some Good News. And it's encouraging in the midst of all of the bad news that we keep on getting. The whole segment that he came up with was brought about due to all this bad news, specifically even re regarding the coronavirus. And let me just say, good news is, is a, it's a breath of fresh air, isn't it? But did you know, did you know that there is worse news than the very bad news of this coronavirus situation that we're all in? It's actually much, much worse than this news. For in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All, all mankind falling short of the glory of God. Now that's some bad news, isn't it? When God looks at his creation, men and women, humanity, when he looks at his creation apart from Christ, the creation of all mankind, young and old, citizens from all nations, he does not See, let me tell you, good people doing a bunch of good things. He does not see people seeking after him, worshiping him, doing what is pure and praiseworthy. He does not see that. He actually sees quite the opposite, as our text tells us, that we are all sinners and that none of us are seeking him apart from Jesus Christ. And that's where we all once were those of us who are Christians here. You were once in that situation. And that's where everyone in the entire world finds themselves at right now, those of you who are not Christians, who are unbelievers. But the good news here, the good news of the gospel is news of, and number two, gospel salvation. Look with me in your Bibles or look at the screen here at chapter 15 and verse 2. It says, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. So in light of all this bad news, uh, the news that all mankind is guilty before a holy God. And let me just add as a side note, I think most people realize that. If they're honest, they know that there's something wrong with them. And probably know that there's a lot of something's wrong with them. Evidenced by the repeated bad choices, bad decisions that they keep on making. Now, 
I'm not saying here that most people would identify themselves as sinners against the holy God because I know that many people don't believe in God to begin with. But even for them, those who don't believe in God, they know that something's wrong. Why? How? Because this is a universal problem that the scriptures reveal, and it's their problem too, whether they admit to it or not. But this same problem of sin and guilt that all mankind is really all of our most pressing problem because the problem leads all of us, all mankind, apart from Christ, to judgment and hell because we sin against a holy God. That's where it leads us to. And it's a problem even that separates all mankind apart from Christ from the relationship, a relationship with their creator, God, who created them. It's a problem that is, though, it's kind of over their heads. What do I mean by that? It's not really a problem that they can do anything about to fix themselves. It's beyond them. And you know what? It's beyond all of us. The reality is nobody can take care of this problem on their own. So it's kind of over all of our heads. But our text here in verse 2, it indicates that there is a solution to this universal problem of sin and guilt that all mankind has. For we see that some people here are being saved. They are being rescued from guilt and the judgment that they deserve. We see that in our text. Christians are just those people. People who believe this most important and relevant news. Who believe the good news of the gospel. And if you are a Christian here or watching online, that means that you are the hearers of not only the good news. It's not that just that you hear it. Because you know what? But the news is broadcasted to all mankind. All have a chance to hear it. The gospel goes out to the ends of the earth. However, the Christian, the Christian is not only just the hearer of the good news, like they heard it and they know about the gospel. No, they are also the recipient of the benefits of the good news for themselves. The genuine Christian experiences gospel salvation and forgiveness of sin and guilt if they truly believe. For the gospel of John in chapter 5 and verse 24 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. Jesus is talking here. And is communicating. If you hear my words, Jesus' message, and you believe in the Father who sent him, that means you have eternal life. And it goes on here in our passage. It says, he does not come into judgment, but he but has passed from death to life. You see, gospel salvation is specifically reserved for people who have heard the good news of Jesus Christ and have believed it to be true even for them. So it's good news, let me tell you, it really is good news for some. The best of news, actually. The best news that anyone could imagine. But for others, it's just news. Right now, if you don't believe, it's just the news. For if someone hears this good news and does not believe, or even if they say that they hear it and they believe it, but they don't actually believe it and they're not true Christians, there's situations like that. We see that in our series in 1 John right now. This text would actually say to us that people in that category have believed in vain. And as we just saw in Romans, that tells us that others who haven't even come close to a profession of faith, that they are right now also falling short of the glory of God because everybody's in that situation. Everybody is guilty, even people who don't believe in God, whether they know it or not. And for those of you here 
who are watching who don't believe the news, but you've heard it. It's just news to you right now. Those of you who don't personally know the goodness of this great, amazing, wonderful, great news in your own situation in life, I turn to our last point. And number three, I turn to this last point, gospel sacrifice, specifically addressing you, unbelievers. You might be thinking, why in the world is this preacher giving a whole point of a sermon to talk to me, an unbeliever, about something that I don't even believe in? What is he wasting his time for? This whole Jesus died for sinners thing, it's just not the kind of news that I believe in. It's not for me. Don't waste your time, preacher. Well, let me tell you, it's not at all a waste of time. I share this news to you because it's the greatest news. And I would understand that you might not want to hear it. Fair enough, I, I get that. Because like I said, I once even also didn't think this whole Christianity thing was all that important either. I had way more important things and pressing things to worry about in my world. And I get that you would share in this same sentiment that I once had. But let me tell you, one day for me, I began to be more cognizant of my biggest problem. My problem of sin and guilt. Now, I don't know how much aware that you are of this problem as you watch or listen to this sermon. But chances are you've grown accustomed to repressing and plugging your ears and closing your eyes to the realities of this problem. For the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 1 and verses 18 and 19, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. So whether you are right now in a full sail suppression of or an ignoring of or an avoiding of the reality of your guilt and your sin. Or as Paul says here in Romans 1, the avoidance of, your avoidance of, the wrath and judgment of God. No matter how much you may be actively doing that even right now in your life. Or how you might be even right now slowly even, maybe slowly but surely becoming aware of this situation for yourself only to just repress it all the more when you get thinking about it anymore. Wherever you're at, all I can do this evening for you is tell you the message to give you the good news. And God, if he so chooses, can convince you of this good news as well as he convinced me of it so many years ago. And he's also convinced all the other believers uh, around the world and in this room and at our church. So here it is, right here in verse 3. It's the news of first importance. The most important news in all history. Everything in the past, before we ever even were born and arrived on scene, let me tell you, was pointing towards this good news. Everything right now that we're experiencing in life, even in the midst of all these seemingly way more pressing headlines, is pointing towards this good news. And everything, let me tell you, in the future, everything in the future when we're gone, when this whole thing that we're dealing with right now with this pandemic is, is Lord willing, over. In the future, everything even in the future is going to be pointing towards this very news. 
It's going to be pointing towards the importance of it, the supremacy of it, the superiority of it, over and against everything else. For this news reveals the solution to all mankind's most pressing, most urgent, most terrible of situation and problem that everybody has. And the answer to this problem, the answer to our guilt and sin, let me tell you, it is not to run away from it or to pretend that it's not there or to just sweep it under the rug or to blame it on somebody else or to ease your problem through substances to help you forget about your biggest problem or to pursue other escapist solutions to help you avoid your biggest problem. The answer for you is not found in any of these things. It's not found in them no matter how much you've been trying to find it in them. The answer to your most biggest problem resides outside of anything you can ever think or do on your own. So I encourage you with the scriptures, even as we saw in the beginning, as Pastor Wood read Isaiah 53, scriptures even that have been attesting to this even before Jesus came and Jesus lived and Jesus died and Jesus rose. Scriptures that have been attesting to this for ages and ages. Why? Because this is a plan that goes beyond even the here and now time and history. You see, Jesus is the substitute for sinners. He willingly provided the sacrifice required for guilty, undeserving sinners like you and like me. But here's the thing. It says here that he died for our sins. And you might be asking, how do I know if I'm part of the hour here in this text? Well, let me tell you, if you believe the gospel message that you can be assured that you are someone who has their sins forgiven and that you are right now a part of that group of people that has our sins that Paul's talking about that are forgiven for us. It means you're a believer and you could know that your sins are forgiven. And I know earlier that I'd said, even in this last point, that I would be addressing unbelievers here. However, I cannot help but remind Christians here and Christians that are watching that if you believe the gospel message, and if you haven't believed in vain, and if you are a genuine Christian, then remember this evening the gospel of Jesus Christ and his death for your sins. And that he died, he died for your specific sins according to the scriptures. He provided for your biggest need. Thank God for that right now. But let me get back to those of you who don't believe this very good news. Let me tell you, he is the only provision and the only one who can take care of this most pressing, this most urgent, and even your biggest need that you know of, that you've been suppressing all along. He's the only one who can give you freedom from the guilt and sin that you know within. So believe in Jesus Christ this evening, the substitute for sinners, the one who provided all that is necessary to make this message of good news actually and truly good news even for you if you would just believe. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you, O oh Lord, for revealing to us our biggest problem and revealing to us the only solution. 
Father, we ask that people would be warmed to this. Christians who may have grown, grown cold to it might be warmed all the more and that they would never grow cold again. That they would love this gospel message for them. That they would rejoice in it, oh Lord. That we would all rejoice in it and that we would believe it and that it would make a difference in our lives. We also pray even for those who may be watching or listening who are unbelievers, who do not know this good news to be good for them. God, I ask, O oh Lord, that you might open up their eyes and their hearts to these things, even as you may have already been working in their hearts right now, that they might believe, that they might be saved, that they might know what it is to have their sins covered, that they might know the most important news in all of history. We say this in Christ's name. Amen.